this opportunity to talk about figures in Casey's history and moments in Casey's life. Okay. I'd ask if you could talk to us a little bit about Bishop Gibson, uh, who the man was and the impact that he had on Kingston College. Well, when I had the good fortune of going to Kingston College in 1951, the glorious years at Kingston College, what I call the golden years, had started a couple of years before. Because when I went to Casey, we had just won the Jamaica Scholarship for the second consecutive year. And we had won also the Rhodes Scholarship in the form of Evan Morris, who many argue was perhaps the most brilliant, one of the most brilliant minds that Casey had produced. Evan Morris was also come and was rounded a person who played cricket and, and he participated in other extracurricular activities. I mention that because some of the outstanding figures of the time were people who were what I call student athletes, excelled academically but still found time to participate in sports and other activities. And when I say that, there are some people who really come to mind. I mean, Lawson Doctor, Dr. Lawson Douglas, had uh, kept gold for KC for five consecutive years, played on four winning Manning Cup teams, and captained the winning Manning Cup and Oliver Shield team in 1952. Of course, you know, he's a leading neurologist in this part of the world and actually performed the first kidney transplant in this region. You had people like Professor Al Francis, who was who retired a few years ago as Professor of Economics, who got his PhD from, um, from MIT, and he was on the, the track team, not track team, I'm sorry, the cricket team, he played on the football team, and he also played on the tennis team. And there people like uh, Professor George Beckford, who um, was a footballer. He didn't actually make the Manning Cup team, but that was one of his greatest dreams. And there were so many others. Because what happened is that, at that time, it was a, a bursting of academic brilliance at Kingston College. But at the same time, why I have described, I have used the nomenclature to describe it as the greatest period in Casey's history from 1949 until probably 1975 or so, is that we achieved so much, so much else. You see, in 1950, we had won the, um, the track and field. We won the Sunlight Cup, we won the Manning Cup. In 1950, we had started, uh, the run had started. Can we look at it? Mm. We had just won the Jamaica Scholarship again. And we um, had won the track and field and the uh, Sunlight Cup. And within the next In fact, in, in nine years, between 1948 and 1956, um, he won the Jamaica Scholarship six times, the Rhodes Scholarship once, and the Centennial Scholarship twice, in nine years. The Centennial Scholarship, of course, is was every other year, because it alternated between girls and boys at the time. But we were also, because in the period from 19, and we did come to Bishop Gibson, of course. But in the period of 19, um, 1949 to 1959, we won track and field five times. We won the um, football six times. I played on two of those winning man cup teams. And uh, we won Sunlight Cup three or four times. And there's another competition called Minor Cup. But there was excellence also in things like the drama festivals. But we would win that year after year. Because I used to have a drama festival in those days. Mm -hmm. you know, elocution and so on and so on. And we did. 
and we also want the um, the, the tennis court. There's a uh, Gibson court, and there was another court. We won that for a number of years in that time. So it was a time when we were producing scholars and we were producing sportsmen and men of character. In addition to that, during that time, we produced Polly Smith, O'Neill Gordon Smith, guys who went on to play, of course, for the West Indies and had the distinction of scoring 100 in his first innings in 1955 at Sabina Park uh, against Australia. And uh, he also scored a century in his first innings against uh, England in 1957 and Eastern Bull McMorris. Right? Now, Bishop Gibson, who was uh, a man of considerable intellectual stature, a man who, despite his debative side, had a strong authoritative presence and had a, a, a patrician intellect, was a person who, was, who had formed the school in 1925, along with some assistants from with his, um, his sister, and I think he got some, some assistance from Bishop McCartney to form the school in 1925. And Bishop Gibson was a person who believed it was formed as a school for poor people, poor people. And uh, because, I mean, up until 1912, there was no um, school for, um, for black people who for secondary education. So he formed the school in 1925. I think he was became disenchanted with the Roman Catholic Church because he had gone to Georgia and won a scholarship. He was the first people to have gotten free education on a scholarship to Georgia. And during his, in his tenure at Georgia's, his academic career was probably only equaled by another brilliant Jamaican, Monsignor Gladstone, who was 10 years after. He never got less than 19 in the subject, right? And in uh, 1909, his average was 98.5. He got, some subjects he got 100 in every year, like English, Latin, and so on, right? So um, the whole idea of the bishop was to build, to, to, to build a nation of of gentlemen to build character so that the emphasis was on the, um, the principles that would guide you to gentlemanly behavior and so on. He was a person who was in a way alone to oneself by commanding. When he spoke, everybody listened. Right? And uh, um, He instilled in us, right, the, I mean, the principle of fair play and so on. I remember in particular in 1952, my brother was on that Manning Cup team, and after we had won the cup, uh, it was a you know, celebration, the boys were singing, my heart cries for you, please come off the field, and so on. And Bishop Gibson was living on the, on the, 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 on the Monday morning. Live it. He says, we don't behave like that. We don't humiliate our opponents. And if it happens again, I will return the cup. That is not what gentlemanly behavior is about. Of course, he was a very strong uh, religious man. And uh, he had to attend chapel every morning and in the afternoons. Right? But Bishop Gibson's greatness was not only in his vision and his leadership, because as I said, he was a, he was a, um, a pioneer in so many things. He was the first black bishop in the Anglican Church, and only in, in, um, in, the, in the 20th century. I think they might have had some, I somewhere in Africa somewhere, I don't know, before. But he was certainly the first black bishop, the first local bishop, he was Bishop of Kingston in 19, I think 1953 or 54. 
and we knew him if affectionately as priest because he had gone to Paul because he had gone to um, to St. George's College, right? But he was the first, and when he became Bishop of Jamaica, I think in 55 or 56, he was the first bishop, local bishop, to be made the Bishop of Jamaica. He was the first black man to be made Bishop of Jamaica in the Anglican Church, right? Now, another thing that um, emerges from the attic of my memory where he's concerned is that he's not only a discipline, he was a disciplinarian, strong disciplinarian, put a tremendous emphasis on your attire and your dress and so on, because we are taught to address our elders properly and to teach our teachers with the deference that they do, treat them with respect and so on. But he had an immense, he was a, also a teacher par excellence. He was a teacher that was unequal. Right, because he taught Latin, he taught religious knowledge, he taught English. In fact, he taught almost every subject on the curriculum. If a teacher was absent, Bishop Gibson couldn't take the class. And he had an astonishing amount of astonishing clarity. He simplified everything. He had the capacity. By the most complex issue, he could make it simple. And what happened too in the days where I, I said that it was such a wonderful period of productivity and achievement is that there were so many teachers who had come to Kingston College who became headmasters of other schools who left KC as an ordinary master. Some of them became second masters and went as headmasters to other schools. These were not to the graduates of universities. They were graduates of teachers training college. And I think the number is in all that we have produced is something like 18 or so. There was Mr. Isaac Henry at, at, um, at St. Andrew. There was Mr. Barrett and Mr. Quick at, at Cornwall. There was um, the, the headmaster of, uh, of Homewood. What is I forgot his name, Johnson. There was Mr. Um, Geddes, Mortimer Geddes at Titchfield. And then they'll, 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 they'll go on. I was like, because what happened, in my view, is that everybody wanted to come. The two Jamaicans who sort of destroyed the world, like a colossus at the time were himself and Norman Washington Monday, where black people and it you know as fine black people were concerned, middle class people. Because of course I don't know, I was a brilliant intellect and a brilliant lawyer and so on. Now now um, Bishop Gibson was the man who was fearless, the man who was this this trailblazer, this man who had this vision and this courage. Because there have been instances where he quarreled with the governor. On one occasion, he was invited to a cocktail party on a Sunday by the governor. And he replied very, very briefly, I will not attend. He could not conceive that you could be indulging in libations and so on like that on a Sunday when he's supposed to be in church worshiping. And went and preached. He was a fiery preacher and preached yeah, again to go and say that Elizabeth, was the queen, was sick of the people that she sent into governor, governors. You understand? And uh, that was the type of man that he was. From, from